Hello, hello everyone. It's me, Arden Lee. I am back today with another video. And today's video is about what do you do when you see someone going down the same harmful path that you have been down before? How do you warn them, especially if you like them, you don't want them to suffer in the same way that you did. Uh, what do you do? What do you do in that case uh, to, uh, to help out that person? This question uh, in particular comes from someone in the repatterning parlor who is uh, seeing an ex-partner uh, with, uh, with a new person. Uh, it's their ex-partner and their, their new partner is someone they want to warn uh, about their ex-partner's abusive behavior. So, uh, and they also mentioned that uh, seeing them together, uh, because unfortunately, um, uh, uh, sh uh, th this person uh, does have to be exposed uh, to the ex-partner with the new partner together um, because there are kids involved in the situation uh, from, uh, from their last partnership. So, uh, uh, so they said that seeing this new relationship, seeing the interactions is, uh, is triggering them. Uh, they said it's like mainlining anxiety, right? Um, so, uh, so what can you do in that situation? Um, before I get into that, of course, uh, I'll go ahead and introduce myself. If you're not yet familiar with me and my work, my name is Arden Lee. I'm the creator of an eight-week course called The Repatterning Project. And that is uh, an eight-week course where we hack our beliefs, we examine our patterns, and we learn all of the ways that our beliefs and patterns form through our formative experiences, our social conditioning, our early childhood trauma, um, and everything else that makes us who we are today, we start being able to untangle those so we can make more conscious choices about what we do with our everyday lives and cut those ties from the past and start making healthier decisions for ourselves that get us into alignment with our goals and with the lives that we want to create for ourselves. So if that sounds like your jam, check out the description box. I have a link to a free PDF guide about the repatterning project. I also have a link to the repatterning parlor, which is the free Facebook group that I mentioned I run, uh, which is full of like-minded individuals who are looking to support each other on their path toward greater consciousness and healing and greater uh, responsibility uh, and empowerment over their decisions. So um, come check it out. We would love to welcome you into the fold. All right, so, um, <laughs> sorry, I'm a little bit sniffly. Um, so what do you do when you want to warn someone about the path that they're going down? Um, the short answer is you don't. The short answer, uh, <laughs> you know, um, I'll talk a little bit about some things that you can do and ways that you can offer help. Um, but the short answer is, you guys, if, if people are making the same decisions that you once made, and you're seeing them making those same decisions, it's really an unhealed part of you that feels that pain around it. It's really the fact that you wish you could go back and stop your former self. And that's an understandable impulse. And there are certain ways, of course, that you can always you know, offer help to people uh, you know, regardless of whether they, they take you up on it or not. But yes, of course, there are ways that you can um, uh, can, can, you know, make a very simple, you know, in under 30 seconds, I'm talking, I'll, I'll just say what I would do like right now. This happened to me actually, uh, with my dad, uh, my dad, uh, my dad is a chronic abuser and he, I was, uh, in a, in a period in my, tw in my twenties where I, um, I hadn't spoken to him for, uh, for about four, four and a half years, maybe, maybe even a little more than that. And uh, all of a sudden, uh, I learned that he was dating a new woman and they were about to be married and he, uh, you know, contacted me over email, which I was accustomed to not responding to and said that he wanted me to meet her. And that was the one thing that I was like, okay, I'll go to lunch with you guys. I, I want to meet her. And, uh, in the, um, you know, in the, uh, it was like, as soon as she said she was, we were at a restaurant, and as soon as she said that she was gonna go to the bathroom, I was like, all right, I'm gonna go to the bathroom too. Uh, and I followed her, you know, and as we were washing our hands in the sinks next to each other, um, I just said, hey, um, I really hope that everything works out for you and my dad. I absolutely support you. 
uh, if, if this is what you want. Um, but you know, I, uh, I, I want to let you know, for, well, actually what I said was, I was like, I want to let you know, um, you know, my mom didn't know that she was wife number three. Uh, my stepmom didn't know that she was wife number four. They both thought they were the second wife. So I want to make sure that you know that you're wife number five. And she was like, yes, I know this. I was like, great. Um, if you ever have any questions, if anything ever happens and you want to know what it was like growing up with my dad, if you, if there's ever any kind of help you need, I'm here for you. Feel free to reach out and it's absolutely confidential. And she was like, all right. And that was it. That was literally all that I did. And she never reached out to me. Their marriage dissolved, you know, however many, uh, you know, years later, maybe, maybe four or five years later. I don't remember. I don't really care. Um, I don't really know what went down. And, uh, and on top of that, I heard that, uh, you know, apparently she suggested to my dad that, that he just leave my inheritance to her and she would make sure that it got to me. So <laughs> great. <right? laughs> I don't really expect to get anything from my dad anyway. So I haven't spoken to him in years. Um, but that's, you know, that's the kind of gratitude that people will repay you for because they don't want to hear that when they're in that position. And guess what? You wouldn't have either when you were there. If you were there, I remember when I was, you know, getting into a relationship that was, uh, that was abusive, you know, um, I had so many justifications for it in my mind, so many reasons why, uh, what was happening was okay and why it was a choice, you know, and, and all this other stuff. And, and plenty of red flags that, that I didn't see because I was in a, a lifestyle where, where, um, where a lot of those were, you know, were kind of glossed over at the time. And there were people who were like, wow, I really just feel sorry for Arden. Like, you know, I really hope she manages to get out of there. And I was like, well, you're just jealous. Like, what are you even talking about? You know? Um, and sure enough, you know, I'm not sure, you know, I'm not sure whether that person was jealous or not, but um, even if the, uh, the relationship didn't seem abusive to me at the time, um, I don't know whether someone really thought it was abusive then or if it just turned abusive later, but there were certainly red flags that I ignored and I would have laughed at that person like, no, you're just jealous. You just want me to, you know, you just want me to leave my boyfriend because, you know, my boyfriend had convinced me that, 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 that person was in love with him. <laughs> right. So of course I would have thought that, uh, that would have been a red flag too, of course, now that I look back, but I didn't know that then and I wouldn't have listened. So there's really no point. And, and this really comes back to, this is, this is about ourselves. You know, this is really about ourselves. If we haven't made those, if we've made those mistakes already, but someone else has not yet made those mistakes, it's also possible you guys that it's, it's that person's path to learn those things firsthand. We learn things so much more truly and viscerally, and we're able to avoid those mistakes more in the future when we actually go through them. And that sucks sometimes because of course we want to save people. Of course we want to reach out, but ultimately everyone has free will. And you know, in this situation, yeah, I, I do the same thing. I just say, Hey, you know what? Um, there was a problem with my, with my exes in my relationship. I definitely don't want to be back with him. And, uh, I just want you to know that if there's ever anything that I, I hope you're super happy, that's awesome. You know, I hope he's changed. But if ever anything comes up for you or you get scared or you get worried or, you know, you need some advice, I'm here for you. Contact me. I promise it'll just stay between you and me. And that's it. That is it. That is it. That is it. If you are looking to do anything more, you're, you're really, it, it's really, you know, I, I think it was really telling this person said that whenever that they, they see, um, uh, their ex, uh, and their ex's new partner interacting, that it's like mainlining anxiety. So really, this is always about us, you guys. It always comes back to the self. And our desire to prevent someone else from going through what we went through is so often about the, the parts of ourselves that are unhealed. Now, if you're using this to, um, you know, to fight systemic injustice. If you're using this, say, to, um, you know, to fight forms of oppression, to lobby for, uh, you know, for, for stricter uh, legislation around things like, like sexual assault, around domestic violence, then yeah, absolutely. Let's, let's work for a system that means that there are fewer people that have to go through this. Absolutely, 100%. I think you guys know I'm a pretty big proponent of that. But if you're singling out one person and, and being attached to their decision-making, that part is never going to be healthy. 
you want to release attachment to what people are doing out of their own free will. And you want to remember that you have your own healing to take care of. You have yourself to take care of. You have your next relationships to take care of. You have, you have your children to take care of. There are so many things. And, and you know, I, I don't know the situation well enough. Um, I don't know the person or the situation well enough to be able to comment about this. But one thing that I will say is I know in my case, when I was super worried about what other people were doing and other people's, you know, other people's ability to make decisions for themselves and um, reinforce their own boundaries, uh, too much attachment in that, um, too much attachment in that regard was always a sign of my being unwilling to look at my own boundaries and my own life and what needed improvement in my own backyard, y'all. Because ultimately, at the end of the day, the only thing that we can control is our own backyard. And then, of course, when people come to us for help, then we have this nice, clean backyard. And we have space and bandwidth that we can help people with, right? Then we can help the people who are actually coming to us who want to be helped. We can, we can work toward, um, you know, toward that good and we can start to, uh, as I said, advocate for more systemic change. We can start to, you know, do things like make a bunch of videos on YouTube and Facebook <laughs> to help people who are asking for our help, right? It's uh, really important that we, that we shed that attachment to what other people's paths look like. And it sucks, I get it, because we don't want anyone to go through those things. But the truth is, people have free will, and we can, we can offer them help, and that's a great thing to do. We can even warn them, but we've got to understand that there are probably reasons, the same reasons that they're getting into that situation in the first place are all the same reasons that they're probably not going to listen to our warnings. So again, just put it out there, leave it for them, say, if ever, if ever it crosses your mind, if ever, you just, I'm not going to mention it again, but there it is. Please feel free. That's it. That's really, really it. And beyond that, um, beyond that, it's really about looking at, uh, you know, looking at what parts of ourselves want to avoid our own next steps and continue to play out that drama uh, for ourselves because we are perhaps uh, not quite as um, removed from it as we may want to be. The way to remove ourselves from it is to start looking at doing that work going forward and uh, figuring out what we want for ourselves next. So I know it sounds selfish because I believe me, I love helping people, but take it from a lot of experience. It just very, very rarely works that way. So especially when there are romantic feelings involved. So, so all you can do is be the lighthouse, right? Be the lighthouse not the life raft. Thank you guys. I'll see you in the next video.